Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. We will be starting the webinar now. Okay. In another uh, uh, thirty seconds, we will start. Okay. Uh, good up. Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning. Good evening, everyone. Depending upon uh, which part of the world our, our attendees are from, uh, they are uh, from a different uh, part of the world. Uh, we thank you them. Myself, Ketan Durge, sales manager for M4. I have been associated with uh, M4 since uh, last 11 years. I thank you all for joining this webinar. We hope this webinar will be knowledgeable for you to understand. how digitalization of modern laboratories is done by laboratory information management system before proceeding uh, i would like to introduce amfer amfer dilas is a part of big conglomerate sentina group having head office in dubai the sentina group presence is all over the world with offices in uae saudi arabia oman kuwait uk india and singapore we have a separate office in qatar known as petro emfer having said this as name suggest the last emfer focuses on diagnostic life and analytical science field emfer is present in this industry since year 2002 and over last 18 years we have been successfully selling and servicing life and analytical science products with over 500 installations in the region Amfer has served clients in pharmaceutical, petro petrochemical, lubricants, academics, packaging industry, chemicals, water, forensics, hospitals, and many more industries segments in these years. We represent one of uh, we represent some of the well-known brands in analytical life science uh, industry like Abisax, Emitec, Mocon, Lycor, Ipendorf, Borosil. macrinagal and many more one of the product that we strongly promote in the region is a software which is a laboratory information management system in short it is called as lims we have the presence in most of the laboratories with our instruments and lims is something that makes instrument talk with with uh, each other gather data from all the instrumentation to one place and helps managers and chemist and the professors or the technicians to analyze this data making processes errorless through the tight control on the process we proudly represent one of the industry's well known name caliber technologies as our principal we are helping our clients in understanding how current trend of digitalization is done through caliber's state of the art lins software today we have invited mr rakesh kandi from caliber technologies as our main speaker rakesh uh, i would hand over to you and you are a better person to introduce yourself uh, caliber technologies and take us through the today's topic before before that i would request all the attendees to pose the questions in q and a section and by end of the presentation all the questions will be addressed also i would request if attendees can put their uh, uh, name in full so that while uh, doing the question and answer session we will be able to address them over to you rakesh yeah thank you ketan uh, yeah greetings to all the audience and thank you very much for joining the session hope uh, everyone are keeping safe and stay uh, and having a good health uh, yeah so before actually i get into today's topic that is digitalization of modern labs by laboratory information management system uh, let me introduce myself a brief introduction so i'm rakesh kandi business development manager for caliber technologies so before i got into business development i was part of implementation where uh, i have implemented several digitally enabled labs in pharma as well as petroleum and i can say uh, predominantly both pharma and petroleum and uh, and i was also taking care of the post production support wing 
uh, where we used to support the customers who have already implemented the digitally enabled apps. And uh, today, before actually I get into this topic, I'll just give you the uh, outlook, like what is that you're going to gain by the end of this webinar. So you'll be able to know like what is digitalization, why companies generally move towards digitalization, and uh, how is it relevant to the quality control apps, and how it benefits the quality control apps, and how to implement it, and what are the general challenges you come across when you are implementing these digitally enabled apps, and how do you choose the right solution provider? And there's also an interesting case study, which I'll be taking you through. So uh, well, let us first understand what is digitalization, because we have been hearing about this word uh, since few years and more often, uh, or I can say quite often after this pandemic, uh, because the reason is like all the organizations are going through operational changes across the world. And uh, the operational changes could be in the supply chain or it could be in the workforce management because most of the employees are working from remotely or uh, they're working in a distributor environment. So we need to redefine ourselves and come back stronger uh, with the right tools uh, so that we can overcome this, this sort of situations and also we can make our life simpler. So one such tool is the digitalization. So basically when you ask me like, what is digitalization? Digitalization is something like, it's like transforming the manual data or paper-based records and functions to the electronic format. The meaning is I can give you a real-time example. Uh, the fit case is the banking sector. So a few decades back, banking sector was completely operating on manual records. And slowly they have uh, transformed all these manual records into the electronic format. And uh, now we know like how banking sector has revolutionized all the banking operations. So this is one of the radical digitalizations which happened in the last decade. Similarly, several other domains have also adopted uh, digitalization and few of them are in the verge of adopting the digitalization. But let us understand why generally companies move towards digitalization. So there are several advantages, I can say, but the important one I have listed here. Uh, the first is like no physical limits for storage. I can give you a better example here because I, uh, I can take an example of pharma companies. The pharma manufacturers, they invest a lot of the wealth in storing and preserving the manual records. So that's where uh, we have that limitation. So that can be overcome with the digitalization. Similarly, the second important thing is like improve accessibility to the information. So uh, this is basically like once the data is in the electronic format, you don't have to depend upon any individual to access that data. But suppose you are authorized to access that, then you will be able to access it from any point of the, uh, like say you can access it from, it from, from your desk as well. So this is where the, it improves the complete accessibility. Then the third important point is like, it increases the safety of any critical data. And it also like, you can also have all these recovery mechanisms. Of course, when you have the man, when you compare with the manual records, electronic records are more safer and secure because there are several technological tools which are in place. Even if you lose the data, these tools can be used to recover that. So because the data is all critical now. So that's where uh, if you have these sort of some sort of digitalization at your end, then it would be easy to recover in case of crash, but it cannot be possible if you are using the manual records. So, and also it minimizes the transcriptional errors. So, because the reason is you can have controls in the applications and all, but if it is a manual system, you cannot have major controls. So yeah, that's, a, that's, that's where it minimizes the transcriptional errors. And due to, uh, due to these obvious reasons, which I have listed, it, it is also very cost effective. And also it increases the productivity. When I say it increases the productivity, you can minimize all your reworks, repeated works, which, which, uh, which will lead to the increase of productivity. So these are a few of the major reasons why generally companies move towards digitalization, it, irrespective of the domain. It could be any domain. It could be uh, petroleum, pharma, or it could be any other domain. But these are the general advantages. Now, let us understand how this digitalization is relevant to our quality control labs. So if you see, if a company is operating on a manual based system, so there are several paper based records. So a few of them have listed on the screen. The major uh, thing which I would like to emphasize is analytical worksheets and the instrument generated data. Because for every sample, you need to write down like what are the calculations you have done and uh, 
why you need to use the calculation sheets and also there is a lot of data generated from the instruments you might be using analytical instruments so there's a lot of data generated from it so on a whole these are the major i can say uh, these the large chunk of data is generated from the analytical instruments uh, that is like instrument generated reports as well as the worksheets so on an average i can say around if it will be ranging from 50 to 150 pages as well so it depends upon the domain so this is this is one of the critical data uh, where, where as we have discussed like if there is any uh, if, if you uh, lose this data it is difficult to recover but still we managed to ma uh, do it through the manual process now let us understand what are the actual issues which you encounter because of the use of this manual systems when i say issues basically uh, the major is the compliance risk because the reason is although the companies might have all these sops and uh, all the procedures in place but the problem is even if you have the sops and procedures in place it is driven by the individual so there is no control over it and there is a lot of scope for a deviation so when you then when there is a lot of scope for a deviation there is a high risk of compliance so we might the the that means the users might not be adhering to the process and all so there, there is a lot of scope for a deviation so that's where we end up with a high compliance risk then risk of data loss which we have already seen then there's audits which are not easy the reason why i have listed audits are not easy is it could be iso 17025 lab or it could be any lab uh, where the audit happens so in those audits generally like we invest our one or two months of resource time in just preparing for the audit and there is huge unknown factor and i say huge unknown factor because we don't know what what audit auditor is going to ask suppose say even though you might be having the data in place but if that auditor asks you that that moment of time then you have to compile that data and show it to the auditor which is a time taking process and it is also not that easy so that's where when you have this digitalization when you have this digital uh, systems in place then you can overcome all this so that's where audits are not easy similarly you can the data retrieval process is very slow the wastage of space you need to invest a lot in storing this uh, data then the increased time and effort so when i say increased time and effort i can give you an example there was an interesting conversation with one of the quality heads so the quality head, so i i happened to meet him then he was sitting with a lot of files uh, on his table uh, which he was gener he was reviewing so out of curiosity i just asked him sir how much time do you take to uh, review or approve these uh, samples so he said like daily i spend around 5 to 6 hours in just reviewing and approving because uh, we get around 300 to 400 samples uh, in a month and uh, moreover i have to uh, work overtime to meet the other responsibilities because he the quality head also has the other responsibilities apart from reviewal and approval that's where you need to put a lot of time and effort i am sure most of you might be relating because you need to put a lot of time and effort and it is you will have limited efficiency so these are the major major problems i can say when you go for the manual system but you might be having a question in your mind because right now from the inception of the uh, if your organization you have been using this paper based records but what is the need for a digitalization is it only for the because we have this uh, covid pandemic we need to go that is also one of the reason but the moreover when your organization landscape increases then there is huge data when the data increases the managing of this data is very difficult this is first and the second one is right now you might be uh, the, the potential which you see with the qc labs might be just the tip of the iceberg but underneath there is a lot of potentials which you are not able to project because of these problems which you generally encounter with the manual based system and of course nowadays even the audits which you are going to face the auditors are willing to have the e electronic audits you know you can understand now how electronic audits will be difficult with the manual based systems so that's where there should uh i when i was researching on this digitalization and all i came to an, uh, i came around an interesting article which is published by mckenzie mckenzie is one of the um, uh, i can say largest uh, consultancy firm so they have given they have give yeah sorry yeah so they have given few of the uh, figures wherein like uh, uh, when they have come taken a sample of already digitalized labs uh, and also the labs which are operating manually 
So where in the set, like almost there is an increase of 30 to 40 percent productivity, and there's almost like 50 percent reduction in the overall quality control cost, and I can say like around 65 percent reduction in the deviations. So this is all published by McKinsey. It's not by me. So the reasons why these figures are very much interesting is because your review time, from the maximum time which I was discussing earlier, so that review time, 60 to 70 percent, there is a reduction in the review time. The reason is most of the controls are within the system. So when I say within the system, so you don't have to go and uh, see each and every point and review it. So you can just review based on the exceptions. Generally, it is called as a review by exception mechanism. So you just see like wherever the exceptions are there, the reviewer can just go and look into it and take the decision. So that's where it actually decreases the uh, reviewer time. Then the second uh, pointer is it uh, the sample inverting. So it reduces the sample inverting time. The reason why it reduces is when you have this digitalized uh, systems in place, you can integrate, suppose if you are already having an ERP system in place. So it can be integrated with your ERP and all this data can be fetched so that you don't have to each and every time write it in your uh, uh, log books and give the details of the sample and all it directly comes and moreover uh, you can generate the electronic labels like say you can have this uh, barcode qr code there in that you can just scan it and you can get the details and of course uh, this third point is specifically for the pharma where there is no scope to uh, miss the os and ot there are a lot of observations like uh, investigation was not done for the failed sample at all. So that means if the sample is not meeting the uh, specification limit, then there is an investigation process. So if you have this uh, digital early enabled solution, so it will actually prompt the user. It will not even allow them to release the sample. So that's where uh, the compliance part is taken care of. Then you also have 80% reduction in the paper cost. When I say 80% reduction in the paper cost, Basically, although you, when you go for a digitalized uh, digitalized uh, solutions, initially there will be a one-time cost on the infrastructure. But in the long run, when you compare the investment which you made on the infrastructure and when you compare the investment which you do on the paper uh, paper uh, paper cost, so it is almost minimized by eighty percent. So if you if you calculate in the long run, although it seems to be higher when you are going for the infrastructure, but in the long run, this is what is the statistics shape says. Then, of course, the 60% quicker decision making. So when I said quick, quicker decision making, suppose say you have these digitalized uh, solutions in place. Uh, I can give you one of the important, uh, interesting examples. For example, this most of us will face in the lab. For example, the analyst knows the, what, what, like, what are the resource crunch they have. Like, for example, uh, they have limited instruments. So he, he or she might go and uh, uh, go and ask their higher management or their quality control head that we need more instruments. Then when you go and ask him, then you need to have a proper justification of the data. So, so if you have, just imagine if you have something in place where it can say that these are the most utilized instruments in this month and these are the least utilized instruments in month. So if this sort of data is readily available, then you can justify yes because there is a lot of workload and that is the reason we need extra uh, instrument so that it actually increases the productivity so these sort of so and even the person who is approving this can easily make the decision because you have data uh, which is justifying that so that's where this digitalization will have a benefit when you're going for a, a decision making and of course quick information retrieval and lesser policing by qa this is also one of the pager points like if you see most of the QA departments, because QA is the backbone, they, they, they show the quality standards of the organization to the outside world. So that's where QA is more involved in policing, like whether the users are uh, adhering to the process or not and all. But when you have all these systems in place, QS more, uh, QS, QA department can shift their focus from uh, policing to streamlining the process, which actually increases the productivity. So these are the major benefits which you come across uh, when you digitalize your QC lab. Now, how do we digitalize them? So when you say digitalize, digitalization, automation, they're all hand in hand. There are a lot of, uh, if you see, if you go just go to the internet and search on digitalization and automation, there are a lot of uh, white papers, there are a lot of research done on it. But the, I, I feel the best way is like, there are three steps. One is digitally enabled apps. The second step is the automated labs. And the third is like distributed quality control lab. When I say digitally enabled labs, it is basically whatever the manual process functions are there, you just transform it into the digital form 
so that you get the real time data and your complete your process will be online your complete process will be online i can say this is something like need of the hour uh, because we need to digitalize so that we can increase our efficiency and also reduce the compliance risk and all so then the, ne the next important thing is the automated labs that is i can say it is like step number 2 which is like you can you you can say that this becomes the need in the next 2 to 4 to years although some of the instrument vendors have already started this but Uh, you by in the next 2 to 3 4 years you can say that all the labs will be having all this automated uh, instruments when i say automated instruments automated labs it mostly depends upon the uh, hardware part the hardware part is basically like automating the sample preparations the sample distribution systems which will be in turn linked with the uh, digital uh, solutions like lins and all so this is the second step and the third step is like which can be the future i can say within the next 10 to 15 years uh, this especially you can see in the uh, in the manufacturing units because right now uh, every manufacturing unit has a specific uh, quality control lab dedicated to them but we have lot of technologies like robotic technology artificial intelligence and machine learning in place where we can use all these technologies and we can have the real time testing that means during at the time, uh, during the manufacturing time itself the the robots can do the job of testing because these are all linked to the automated labs and as well as you have all these lins and other other automated solutions so this actually uh, uh, decreases the turnaround time as well of course you will have quality control lab but this will be for a special testing special uh, sample analysis or even for stability and all which we will park this aside because this can be in the next 10 to 15 years you can see this sort of thing so i'll focus or emphasize more on the digitally enabled apps so this is this is the illustration of what i have just now spoke uh, so this is the first section which i am highlighting is the digitally enabled lab where uh, you can see all of this uh, systems and instruments are connected uh, through wifi and uh, you can see the analyst who is accessing all the information through the handheld device which is connect which is which where they they can access the electronic uh, lab notebooks or laboratory information management systems so this is where i can say the digitally enabled labs the second uh, section is the automated labs where you have all these instruments where automatic sample preparations and these are in turn linked with the electronic lab notebook or laboratory information management systems and the third is the i can say the distributed quality control you can see this is the manufacturing area and the robot takes care of they take the sample they do the analysis and send the information uh, to the limbs so this is this is called the distri distributed quality control lab now we have seen what is digitally enabled lab but let us understand how do we implement this digitally enabled lab so because when i say a digitally enabled lab lot most of them they mean like it's an expensive affair going for digitalization yeah it, yes definitely it's an expensive but not at the cost of compliance or not at the cost of efficiency so this so we can still have it have this digitally enabled labs be implemented in multiple phases so what i have done is i have segregated this uh, implementation process into four major categories i can say four major functions one is automating sample management the second is instrument integration uh, with sample management third is automating the other qc functions and the fourth is the reporting the analytics at the dashboard once you have all this data the fourth function is about the reporting analytics so let us go one by one so the first is automating the sample management so when i say automating sample management irrespective of the industry uh, the major core steps is like you get the sample you do the you distribute the sample to the analyst in the lab then you analyze it review it and release a report that's the analytical report or the certificate of analysis you will be uh, releasing so these are the core steps but whenever you go for automation of sample management you also have to ensure that not only these basic but there are several features which you have to ensure that that is already present in the uh, digitalized solution if that is not there then it will not actually suffice your needs so that is i can i can give you few of the pointers here like say when you are registering the sample the system should be capable of integrating with your erp and you can it should be uh, uh, means you should be able to register the different types of samples where schedule based samples or directly when you receive the sample you will be you should be able to log in then if it is pharma then you need to have this reduced testing or skip testing in place so all this in these features have to be inbuilt during the registration 
so that it is in line with all the processes which you are following it should not be like semi uh, semi automated or a hybrid once you are going for automation of sample management it should be a full fledged system then then you also need to have the sampling in place where all the sampling rules especially uh, this is for the uh, manufacturing units like whenever you go and collect the sample so there are several as per your procedures you might be applying different rules so all those rules you should be able to configure in the system so that uh, it, it, the life of the analyst becomes simpler so they don't have to go and calculate or do all the all the activities outside the system again come back and record it it should be something like an online kind of thing and of course when you are distributing it the system should ensure that you are distributing only to the qualified person like say for the person is eligible to do that analysis or is qualified to do that analysis then only that person's name should be listed when you are allotting the sample so that's where there this sort of control should be there which in the manual process you might have uh, you might you you might not have those control but with the electronic system this is all possible and then when you go for analysis the complete worksheet or the calculations should be electronic you don't have to again go and use excel sheets and all so it should be something like you just have to take the parameters put the details it away and it has to evaluate and say whether it's pass or fail and uh, it, it should also it, it is something like uh, do it right for the first time it should have this sort of feature and for example if you are doing something if you are not following the process uh, i can give you a fit case here for example if the analyst has to collect a sample and there the tolerance of plus or minus 10% is acceptable means system should prompt the user if he is collecting more or lesser if he or she is collecting more or lesser sample so that's where so when you are doing it you are doing it right for the first time so that's that, that should be the pitch or i can say that should be the technology in this particular system whenever you are going for the automation of sample management and of course once you do this then the review and approval process should be easy the one which we have discussed earlier it should be like something like a review by uh, uh, I, i mean a review by exception mechanism should be in place and also like say if your results are out of the spec it should trigger so these are all uh, the important features which you need to take care or which you have to ensure when you are moving to automating the sample management it means you have to ensure that that particular solution has all these features in place it's not like you need to configure or the consultant has to configure this this should have to be inbuilt because these are the bare minimum things which has to be there in order to automate them. they of course there could be some specific to organization to organization which has to be configured but i can say these are 80 to 90% of them has to be within the system so this is first part which is automating the sample management then the second part phase is instrument interface i am not saying like you should go step by step you can go if based on the uh, uh, capacity of the lab you can go with all the four step at a, at, a, at one go or you can also divide this parts into four functions the second function i can say which is the important or the critical in automating in our quality control labs is analysis part where it has to be linked with your analytical instruments so you might be wondering like there are different set of analytical instruments in your lab it could be from different makes and models different suppliers and all so uh, what you have to do is you need to segregate based on the type of the instrument when i say type if it is like you have this uh, instruments which do not have a software basically they might be having some sort of port or some communication channel so these are like your balances or ph meter so these are generally called as port based instruments then the second step is you need to you there the, the, sorry the second uh, type of instrument are the instruments which gen, the standalone instruments which generates the files with the report output so where you have a software and the software gives you the report output so you need to segregate the port based the file based and the next is the network system so there are several set of network systems wherein you connect a different set of instruments to those network systems like network systems like lab solutions or uh, empower or comilion so other other network systems so you need to you need to segregate these three types of instrument so that now the connection to the uh, sample management or the analysis part is easy now you are not depending upon the make and model you are depending upon the type so that particular capability should be there in the uh, solution where you in through which you are going for automation or digitalization so this part has to be taken care that's the function 2 then function 3 is basically the other uh, qc operations so i have listed all the operations here 
some of mostly used by pharma non pharma so I have collated all the things and put it here so it was like basically the inventory so like when you are doing the analysis so suppose say you are using some sort of chemicals so it should be like a contemporaneous thing and whenever you are doing it when you are using that particular chemical you have to record like how much chemical you have used so that the reconciliation is maintained so similar way all the other inventories also uh, so all the inventories comes into the third section third uh, function so like say chemicals reference volumetric and if you go to the uh, pharma then you have stability management working standards so all this comes into the third function then the fourth function is when you have all these three functions in place now the important thing is analytics or uh, reporting or i can say the dashboard so when you have all this in place then the driving that analytics is very much easy so that system should have this capability of having the reporting system in place and reporting should also be very much simple it should not be like uh, a, a a person in the qc lab should also have the computer uh, computer language skills like additional skills apart from his regular job the skills which are required for his job it should not be like that even any person in the qc lab should be able to generate the reports or should be able to see the dashboards or configure the dashboards that easy it should be so it should be something like this like say how many samples you have released how many samples are still under pending how many are under analysis with whom this particular samples are right? what is the workload and for example if you want to see what are the least utilized instrument what are the highest utilized instruments uh, basically instrument utilization instrument performance so these sort of dashboards uh, you should be able to configure then i can say then it's like a full pledged a digitally enabled lab when you have all this in place from the process point of course the instruments plays a different role where you are automate the analysis part but when you see from the process point these are the key four functions which are mandatory required to make it a completely digitally enabled lab now we have seen like what are those functions but when you are implementing these functions what are the general challenges which you come across there are a lot of challenges but the prime i can say the important challenges are a uh, few of them which are listed here the, the lead time from switching from manual to electronic system should be less although when i say lead time because suppose say you procure the digitalized solution now into your quality control lab you cannot directly switch from a manual to an automated system on a, in in a day one or day two it, it it requires some sort of systematic approach for it so you need to be very careful when you are switching from manual to electronic system so when i say careful although uh, the solution providers will give you several user friendly options but here you need to understand that you uh, the customer i mean the uh, the end user also has to put their time and effort in it so that they one time configure all the required information into it so when you are configuring it it should not be like say suppose say a, a particular company pro manufactures around 300 products so in order to configure all these 300 products it might take some say 3 to 4 months it should so what you have to do is you have to have a systematic approach like whatever the critical samples are there first you need to configure those masters then parallelly you can have the second set of team who would be working to configure the other related products so that way you can have a systematic approach so that you can lessen your lead time so this is one of the challenges which generally companies uh, uh, face then procedures and controls so especially with the iso 17025 labs and other uh, labs where they adhere to gmp and the glp norms so basically what happens is you need to verify these procedures and controls before actually you implement it the reason is once after you implement then you find there is some control missing there is some procedure missing with this particular solution then it would be very difficult i'm not saying it's not impossible it would be difficult for you to configure back all those procedures and control so whenever you are doing the gap analysis whenever you are implementing these digital solutions you need to thoroughly understand what are the procedures what are the controls you want in the system so once this is finalized once you understand what is the scope you would like to have it in in the digitally uh, digitalized solution then then only you should go for the implementation so this is one of the key important things because most of the failures also you can see with the procedures and controls like initially they implement straight away and later they realize that it also depends on the response it is also the responsibility of the solution provider they have to educate or enable the end user that these are the things possible and not but at the same time it is equally the responsibility of the end user to understand that system what is possible and what is not possible 
so that is the procedures and control and third is ease of use and training so because when you are switching from a manual based system to an electronic system this is a purely a cultural change that when i say cultural change it is the users have to adopt to the new way of working so when when you say new way of working it should not be something like an alien like they should not uh, put their complete efforts in understanding that system it should be something in line with your manual process so that they don't put more efforts in understanding the uh, uh, solution i can say around 30 to 40% of these uh, uh, implementations have failed because the applications are not that user friendly and i can i can quote you an example of one of the global vendors also who provide this sort of solutions so they they are uh, i i came across one of the qc analyst who was doing this activity i mean who was actually operating this digital uh, digitalized solution so i asked him how do you configure and all so at each time he was referring that each time i have to go and approach the consultant that means it's not that easy to use like if you want some change then you have to go and approach the consultant of that particular supplier so that is and that supplier is a global supplier that is also one of the shocking things so that, this is where you need to understand like how easy it is for your users to configure and whether it needs any additional skills or not or how easy it is to train to the end users so that has to be taken care because if this is not taken care after the implementation there, there will be a lot of problems and you end up in going for an hybrid system few of the things you do in the application few of the things you do manually that will actually lead to an hybrid mechanism which is very difficult to manage then of course compliance and data integrity part has to be taken care uh that uh, the 21 cfr part 11 or the alco or all this compliance guidelines which are there that has to be within inbuilt into the system so there is there shouldn't be any compromise on this so these are the basic challenges which you encounter and which you need to be very careful or look over when you are when you are going for the digitalization now we have seen the challenges now let us understand how to choose the right solution provider so of course you might be having all your uh, vendor evaluation process and all but you are uh, my but my suggestion is to have all these pointers also into your vendor evaluation process when you go for evaluating or choosing the right solution provider for digitalizing your qc process so i termed this as prime prime is p stands for pharma and petroleum because once you once the vendor solution provider is specialized in digitalizing this pharma or petroleum basically the so more or less the workflow remains the same and uh, i can say the sample receiving allotment results recording the review this this process remains the same so that vendor should be more focused on digitalizing these set of labs so that it is easy to implement any type of quality control labs so that is that is one first thing second is the vendor should have a thorough knowledge on the regulatory requirements because there are a lot of deliverables which are required during implement during this implementation like say the functional specification the risk assessments and all so that yeah, later on when you are going for the audits you don't end up that these documents are not delivered and all so that part you have to take care and third is the experience in integrating with wide variety of qc instruments the reason why i have pointed this is there are a lot of vendors who say that yes we can integrate with analytical instruments but the problem here is you have to make sure that the solution provider who gives the solution has to integrate each and every instrument in your lab see generally uh, what the solution provider does is they give the training to the end user and first five or 10 instruments they configure and they say that yes please go and configure this is like we have trained your users then you need to go and configure it then the user will also be happy with the initial stages because it is all given to them but the real problem when they uh, when they face is like when they actually configure them there could be lot of cases which might that could be a limitation with the system or there could be limitations with the uh, uh, templates or some there could be a lot of challenges so what you have to ensure is although you should uh, insist the solution provider to give this tool where you can manage yourself but you have to throw this responsibility to the solution provider so that your life is simpler when you are giving a solution again you should not put your all your efforts in doing or configuring that activity that vendor has to take the responsibility so that's where you need to ensure that they take the end to end responsibility of integrating all the qc instruments then focused on digital uh, digitalizing the multiple functions 
uh, this also refers to the manufacturing units where you have multiple departments like QA, manufacturing, and uh, of course, the QC. So there is a lot of data flow between these departments. Suppose if this vendor has the solutions to cater to all these departments, then integrating this will be very much easy. I'm not saying that if you are having two different solutions, it is not possible to integrate. It is possible, but the complexity involved in integrating uh, the solutions from the same vendor would be less. And it is because all this uh, uh, communication channels, everything will be enabled within the system and it is all their proprietary code so they can easily integrate it. So that's where this will actually, you, this, this point also has to be taken care. Then E stands for extensive. When I say extensive, the system should be like something, like it should be something like a commercially off the shelf product. So when I say commercially off the shelf, it should have extensive workflows, comprehensive workflows within the application. And it should be something like just you need to enable, like say if you need this workflow, you need to just say yes or no, that's it. It should not be something like the consultant or the person who is uh, who having additional skill, skills of configuring all this should not be the case. It should be like within the system it should have because the problem, the reason why I'm suggesting you to go with a commercially off the shelf product is there are several vendors who say that yes, our system is also configurable. But the problem is that configuration cannot be done by an end user. It is a person who should have some skills. So it is always dependent on them. And the second thing is whenever you do a lot of configurations, right? So next time when you go for the upgrades, when the, if the version is upgraded, then it would be difficult for the vendor, the solution provider, to upgrade all your configured features to the next version. So this is also one of the problem which uh, most of the companies faces. And when you go for upgradation, they said, no, it's not possible because there is a lot of configuration done. So that is, the reason, uh, that is the reason that configuration should be something within inbuilt in the system. So then really it's called as commercially off the shelf. Directly you can use that product with all the workflows inbuilt into it. So these are the five major things which you need to take care apart from your evolution, regular vendor evolution process. So as we are talking about the right solution provider, so uh, I, I guess this is the right time to introduce Calibre Technologies. So Calibre is one such right solution providers. We have been in the market for almost 20 years and we have been catering to uh, several domains like uh, pharma, petrochemical testing. So we have been digitalizing many labs, I can say around 190 plus implementations we have done. And we have presence in like say, we have customers across 14 different countries and it is still expanding and we are operating through different partners across the globe. And almost like say, I can say like, we have a user base of uh, across, uh, around 84,000. So we, and still it's increasing. So this is where Calibre is very much experienced and whatever the qualities which have listed, that is all there with Calibre. And uh, we will be help, uh, we, will be, we will be serving our customers better than the other solution providers. So these are the major qualities which I can say, which Calibre is having. So, uh, so now this is about the Calibre. Now let us understand what are the solutions we provide. So the first or the flagship product, which is more relevant to our quality control is Calibre Lens. So if you ask me like, what is that USP or what is that, uh, how can you define Calibre Lens? How is it better? So I can say it in a three simpler words. It is comprehensive because it has got around 16 different modules within the application which can cater to different domains. I can say if, if the pharma is using, you can have all those uh, uh, operations, you can automate through this. And if you're going for a petrochemical, there are separate modules which are, which are suitable for petrochemical. And it is like a comprehensive. It's not just like a simple workflow. It is like all your operations can be automated. So that comprehensive it is, and it is compliance part, need not to say, because most of the companies where we are serving have been audited by uh, several regulatory agencies, all the stringent regulatory agencies like USFDA, MHRA, TGA and all. So you need not worry about the better uh, compliance part. So it has inbuilt compliance in it. This all co plus 21 CFR part 11, all this are inbuilt into the system. And the third important thing, which you need to very much emphasize is, it is easy to master and easy to use. When I say easy to master, it is not that the caliber or the effort team needs to configure the system as per your workflows and all. Most of the workflows are inbuilt into the system and the end user can just, once the training is done, they can just configure from their end. 
without any additional skills of scripting language on it. So this is one of the important things which I can say uh, has, uh, should be there with the limbs vendor. So these are the three things which I can define caliber limbs in short. So well, I can show you an illustration of uh, a lab, QC lab, where the caliber limbs is implemented. So here, what happens is this, is this part, this section is the caliber limbs product. And uh, this, this is a sample management workflow where your sample login, e-sampling, sample allotment, analysis is all automated. And this can also be linked with your ERP systems so that once you put the sample information, it directly comes into the uh, uh, LIMS application and you can do these activities. And you can have this analysis linked with your instruments as well as inventory so that whenever you are doing the analysis or recording the results, you don't have to again generate a report, print it, scan it and upload. Automatically, it will be interfaced with all these different types of instruments and it gets the data. For example, if you want to collect the weight from balances, just have to go put the weight on the balance, click on print. That value will automatically come to the LIMS worksheet. So that easy it is. So all this data can be fetched from the analytical instruments and similar to, at the same time, you can also have this inventory reconciliation taken care by the system during the analysis itself. Then once the analysis is done, the review and approval process, what are the features which we have discussed, this is all inbuilt into it. The final, is, final part is the COA or the raw data. Raw data is very much detailed. You, you will be knowing like who has done the analysis, what are the details, it's the complete details of analysis basically. And all these instrument related files are automatically attached to the raw data. It's not like you have to scan and there, there's no scope for transcript, uh, transcriptional errors kind of thing. So that, that's why it, it would actually help the end user or the, the people use, uh, in the quality control to automate their process with our LIMS application. Then I'll take you through one of the case study. Uh, so although we have 190 plus implementation, the reason why I have chosen this case study is, so this case, uh, this is uh, one of the uh, interesting case where this is one of our first implementation in China. The reason why I've taken China is there's a huge language uh, uh, barrier, but still we, we were able to implement it in the record time. So the major challenge for them was when we, we, when we approached them, they said like the major challenge for us is we, they, they generally export to US markets. So it's a, it's a pharma company. It's pharma company where they do all these formulations and uh, uh, they, their major market is US. They, they, it's mostly exporting and they receive around 150 to 200 samples in a month. And there are major challenges. Uh, the reason why they want to digitalize at that time is they wanted, because it was difficult for them to store all those papers and uh, there was an audit. So they, they were actually applying for US FDA audit. So they want to have some quality system in place so that it is easy for them to face the audits. That, that is also one of the things. And the most of their analyst time was spent on reworks and repeated works. So that was a major challenge and they were not able to get these analytics and all. So that's, those were the challenges. And apart from these challenges, the challenges which we have discussed earlier were also the challenges which they were facing. Then they have evaluated around three to four different vendors. Then they came up with, we are going with Calibre. The reason is it's very easy to implement. Then within one month, although we have this language barrier and all this uh, in place, but we were able to train these users within one month. So that's how easy our system is. Then we took the gear, uh, so during this one month, we have trained the users on how to configure the system, how to uh, put their masters, how to put the product information calculations into it. Then there are a few configurations which are done specifically to that company. So we have taken all those uh, configuration items, then we have configured it. Uh, so this took around one month. And once they acquire, as, it's a, as they're exporting to U US markets and they're, they're mostly into pharma, they're, then the guidelines are very much stringent. So the validation is mandatory. Of course, if, uh, if it is a non-pharma, there's no need for uh, complete validation to be done. You can also go with the pre-validation script, means the validation documents will be provided directly. But this case, this company has requested us to go with the validation, end-to-end -end validation, again, additionally. So we have taken two months, a comprehensive, around 35,000 of steps we have executed, and we have given the complete document, validation document within their environment. And around 30 instruments were there, different types of instruments. We have interfaced them. Uh, that's where 
it was the complete project and they were completely using this application within six months of time. So that is one of the record uh, implementations which we have done. Although if it is non-pharma, this time will be lesser and based on the modules which you implement also depends. But they have implemented the, all the modules, like say around 14 different modules they have implemented. They have automated complete all the operations. So that's where they have digitalized the QC. And at the same time, there are other solutions which cater to QA and uh, uh, the, the trainings and all. So that, that are also from Caliber. I'll, I'll take you through those solutions. But they have implemented all these three in place uh, because of the successful implementation of their laboratory information management system. So once after they have gone live, it is almost like all the specifications were online and all the samples which they received, they were able to process it online and there were no, the deviations got reduced and the reviewer time got reduced and whatever the reworks, repeated works, that all, that, that all got minimized. And now, the, now during, especially during this pandemic time, so most of the users are working remotely. This actually helped them because having this system in place, the reviewer sitting at his home can actually view the raw data and approve that. So that easy it was. So that, uh, that made their life simpler. So that way it has actually helped all this, uh, this particular limbs application has helped this uh, company to overcome all the challenges which have been listed. And there are several other case studies as well. Uh, you can access it on our website or we can have a detailed demonstration. So these are few of our customers where we have implemented our applications. So Global Pharma is one of them which we have implemented through Emperor recently in Dubai. So they have implemented our quality assurance system. This is, they have automated the QA process and they're also in the verge of automating the uh, quality control and other, uh, uh, other departments as well. So, yeah. I can say 99% of them are uh, audited by all the stringent regulatory bodies like USFDA or MHRA and all this. So these are few of our valued customers. There are around, I can say around 160 different customers where we are serving currently. And uh, coming to the next steps. So we can schedule a full pleasure demo. Our Emperor team will get in touch with you. So wherein like survey, so you want to see the complete limbs demo, then we can schedule this full pledge demo, understand your process and we can pro configure the process what you are doing right now manually into our system which will hardly take one or two days and we can give you a detailed demonstration so that's where that much easy is our product to configure any sort of uh, manual process so that's the second step so we first to give the full demo understand your requirements configure them and give one more detailed demo and then the third step is you evaluate and you can digitalize your lab so these are the three steps which I'm looking forward from the people who have attended this session. Uh, Rakesh, uh, uh, there is one, because you already said this uh, point now, there is one uh, interesting question from, uh, uh, from one, of the, one of the attendee, uh, Mr. Habib mm -hmm. Abdul uh, Rahman. Uh, he's from Abu Dhabi University. He's asking, yeah. how can we utilize limbs for academic uh, laboratories like chemistry, biology, physics, and uh, different engineering labs because in their labs there are in, in academics there are different different labs how can they integrate it it's a fantastic question and i request you to answer this uh. yes yes sure definitely Ketan. yes sir so when it comes to academics yes we have implemented in several academics uh, institutions as well like uh, singapore polytechnic and uh, there is a kins institute so basically what happens is there are two ways the academics we have uh, done in two different ways one is like if this academic institutes gets the samples from outside, that is one way. Second is internally, if they are using this solution to train their students or internal analysis, if they are doing, you can use this solution in both ways. The reason is we have a training management system as well as the laboratory information management system, which can be interlinked. So I'll talk, uh, I'll discuss about this both solutions. Suppose say, if you are getting the samples from outside, from customers and you are analyzing in your academic institutes, like most of the academic institutes where we have seen, they are doing this sort of activity. So what they do is like the same process, the sample, you, uh, my suggestion is like you can go with the sample, the core sample workflow automation, where it has all these features, like when you receive the sample, what is that you have to enter and all those things can be configured from your end. Then finally, you can release the certificate or the analytical report through this, this core sample management itself. 
and the second step is like if you also want to track the inventory laboratory inventories which you are using like say the chemicals or the instruments uh, like the usage like from what time to what time you have used that can also be integrated so i can say around three to four modules which will actually fit into your need so what we can do is after this webinar we can have a detailed discussion with you and understand more about your requirement so that we can uh, we we can uh, we can suggest you the appropriate solution which would but uh, at this point yes we can cater to educational institute there are a lot of educational institutes like well known like singapore polytechnic are also using our applications okay uh, rakesh uh, thank you very much uh, there is another question uh, from one of the attendee he is asking like uh, the limbs is suitable for pharma is the limbs so suitable for pharma production unit no but i mean see when you see production unit see limbs is basically for recording the analysis part so in the production unit there are ipqc samples in process quality checks so uh, what my suggestion would be is like there is a separate uh, application called caliber batch record management which will have all this in place wherein you can automate your complete manufacturing process also your ipqc samples can be managed to the batch record management but if you are specifically looking for only ipqc not the other uh, automation then you can use our limbs application as well okay and uh, another question is uh, uh, from anonymous attendee uh, i i would request if uh, you can change the name so that i can uh, understand from where it is coming the question is can you provide more insights on the stability management okay uh, basically stability management is uh, i am sure this is from the user who is into pharma so stability management like you have the protocol for example if you are doing a stability analysis so there is a protocol so that protocol can be configured in the system wherein you have different conditions as per that conditions you will test the sample so you will put store the sample in those conditions at regular regular time points you take the sample and you analyze so this complete schedule the complete protocol can be configured in the system and automatically as per the scam, uh, uh, sample withdrawal date a sample will be generated in the system and it also takes care of the reconciliation and moreover at the end you get the summary report summary report is very much important to the stability uh, uh, studies so wherein this gets automatically generated and uh, you can also have on demand reports like say for example there is a regulatory agency they have asked you to provide some 6 months 12 months and uh, 18 months study what is the uh, results you got you can just go into this application select what are the pools you want and generate a report so that simpler it is so it has got a detailed complete uh, de whatever the activities you do in the stability studies that's all inbuilt into the system okay uh, also uh, rakesh there is a question from mr sunil that uh, he is uh, uh, he is from forsan foods uh, saudi arabia he is asking i am looking for a solution including the laboratory management online process control and qms system can your limbs be upgraded to include such modules yes so we do also have the quality assurance uh, management system where all these processes can be automated so we can take you through the qms system uh, this qms demo so wherein most of your qa processes can be automated to it and later on this can be linked with our laboratory information management system so it can be integrated yeah okay another question uh, which is in a qna is uh, can this be can this solution be integrated with erp system yes this can also be integrated with the erp system it could be sap or oracle based erp uh, so once you re re receive the sample you enter the details in your erp system the details can be fetched into the lens and after your analysis you can also send the pass fail status whether the sample is qualified or not qualified this information can be sent back to the erp system as well okay one of the one of the question is uh, uh, asked by one of the attendee is how much time will it take to implement this solution uh yes this is an interesting question so basically i can say typically it takes up from 2 months to around 6 months so the reason is it depends it's completely modular based structure so it depends on the number of modules so the bare minimum thing is you we can also implement within 45 days that's that so we can give the training as well as the configuration everything can be done within 45 days if you are going with the base sample management or if you are adding the other modules then the timeline might vary so typically i can say it is from 2 months to 6 months based on the modules which you choose okay there is another question just uh, coming up now is that is it available in a multiple languages 
Yes, this is bilingual as well. So uh, all our application supports the uh, bilingual, like you can, because the one which I was giving the case study. So there we have uh, a translate, means we have the Chinese application. There. Okay, and uh, another question just came up now is uh, how can uh, how can it uh, be applied in PET lab? Uh, PET. P -E -T. Uh, yeah, uh, so in this case, I need more information, Ketan. So we'll mm. get in touch uh, yeah. with the uh, person once this webinar is done. So what yeah. exactly is they are looking for in the PET lab? Yeah. We have to get. Yeah. Uh, just now, another question came up: Is uh, can you explain what uh, what is APQR? See, APQR is Annual Product Quality uh, re uh, Review. So basically, like say uh, every year. So this was actually every year you have to send your product quality reviews to the uh, regulatory agencies, like how many batches have released, what are the, uh, the results of each and every batch and how the trend is behaving, the process capabilities. So there are around uh, 22 to 23 parameters where you need to build up and give a report for all the products which you have, all the batches which you have manufactured. So what this application will do is, it can, it can be interfaced with your LIMS or other applications and get the data and you can define the template the way you want the APQR to be there. You can define that template. So with a single click, you will be able to generate the complete APQR report. So generally, uh, this is one of the interesting versions. So whereas like most of the companies, the pharma manufacturers, I can say, they spend around uh, three months uh, uh, in just uh, preparing this APQRs, the documentation section. So generally it is based on the financial years. Like say if it is, they have to produce this in March. From January onwards, there are five to six resources who are dedicated to this activity. They'll compile the huge chunk of data and uh, generate this report. But now when you have this application in place, it can interface with all these modules, get the information, and it can generate the process capabilities as well. So uh, we will we'll not call it as annual product quality because it's like anytime you can generate the report. So we call it as anytime product quality. Review. Okay. Uh, can can we get those uh, dashboards explained in LIMS application? Yes, all these dashboards you have within the LIMS. So there's a reporting inject which is where, which is inbuilt with the LIMS. So through that, we can generate all these dashboards. Okay, uh, uh, I think they are, we are all, almost at uh, two o'clock now. It's uh, already two o'clock and uh, most of the answers questions have been answered. Um, we come to the end of this uh, session. Uh, uh, Rakesh, you would like to go ahead and uh, uh, say the thank you words because uh, we allow to close down this. There are a lot of questions which are there, which will be will be addressing uh, it uh, one by one uh, after the webinar. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. Once again, thank you very much for joining this session. So you can reach us at any time, like if you have got any queries, and this presentations will be circulated to everyone. And uh, yeah. Thank you once again for attending this session. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone uh, from uh, from Emfer uh, Sentina Group. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rakesh, for uh, for being uh, such a nice uh, speaker. You gave a lot of information on uh, uh, this uh, digitalization. I hope uh, the, our attendees was uh, uh, they got some additional knowledge from your presentation. Uh, this is a uh, time to sign off. Uh, thank you very much, all the attendees. Uh, looking forward to. See you in uh, in uh, coming uh, future. Thank you very much. Thank you.